Now let us start the topic of transfer functions and network functions. Uh, there is a system represented by GS. Here we are having an excitation RS and a response CS. Why these variables R and C? Because R is used for reference and C is used for control variable. Now, how do you define transfer function? It is defined as the ratio of the Laplace transform of the output, which is also known as response, to the Laplace transform of the input, which is known as excitation. Now, assuming zero initial conditions. Okay. So, transfer function basically represents the transform of the output to the transform of the input with initial conditions being treated as zero. Now, what is a network function? Basically, network function is nothing but a transfer function which is represented for an electrical network. How do you define it? A network function is a transfer function of an electrical network where both input and output variable means C and R can be either voltage or current means input can be voltage or current output can be voltage or current. So there are various ratios which are taken voltage to voltage voltage to current, current to current, current to voltage and so on. All of them fall under the category of net network functions. Here the condition which is to be borne in mind is that the initial conditions pertaining to a network are that the inductor and capacitors are having zero initial condition. We have already done about initial condition and inductor is having initial condition of I0 and a capacitor is having an initial condition of VC0. So both of them are equal to zero. Then the ratio of the output to input is known as network function. Network functions can be classified into two categories. One of them is emittance function and another is non-emittance function. The emittance functions, they are also known as transform impedance or transform admittance functions. This is what is more important for you. Under it, you have impedance function and admittance function. In fact, the word emittance has been coined by combining these two. I M of impedance and mittance of admittance combined together gives you admittance function. So, impedance function is basically the ratio of V1S by I1S which is known as driving point input impedance function. Why it is driving point input impedance function? Because from the input side, when you take the ratio of its voltage to current, then basically it gives you impedance as seen between the input terminals looking into the network after removing all other sources of excitation. That is driving point input impedance function. Similarly, you have driving point output admittance function, which is I2S over V2S. Looking back from the other side, from the side where the output is obtained, from the other side, if you are taking the ratio of the current to the voltage, transform current to the transform voltage, then you call it as driving point output admittance function. These two functions are important. Besides them, there are two more functions, Z22, that is V2S by I2S, which is a reciprocal of Y22, and Y11, which is I1S by V1S, which is a reciprocal of Z11. So basically, we have these two impedance functions. One is driving point input impedance function. Another is driving point output admittance function. Now, here it is driving point input impedance because in input impedance as seen from the input side. And here we are having the output admittance function that too when some applied voltage is there on the output side and we are trying to find out what admittance it is going to have. Now coming on to non-emittance functions, they are simply known as network function as well. Under it, there are two terms. One is voltage amplification, where you have the ratio of voltage to voltage, output voltage to input voltage, and current amplification alpha, which is I2 over I1. Now let us do a few numerical on voltage amplification and current amplification so that in your exams, when a question is put up, you are in a position to solve them. This will be making use of 
voltage division formula and current division formula. If you are not remembering it, kindly go through the previous video and proceed further. Let's start from a very basic question. Find out the voltage amplification V2 by V1 denoted by G for the given network. Now in this network, we are finding that there is a capacitor having impedance 1 over SC and there is a resistor having R ohm. The output is V2, input is V1. Directly by the use of voltage division formula, where this is corresponding to the output side and the combination is here represented in the denominator. So V2 is by V1S is R over R plus 1 over SC, which on solving, you can see it becomes SCR over SCR plus 1. Take CR common, CRCR CR gets cancelled and this becomes S over S plus 1 over RC. Here I would like to add one point that when you equate the numerator to 0, we get a 0. There are poles and zeros of a network function. So at S is equal to 0, we have a 0. S is equal to minus 1 over RC. We have a pole. We'll come on to the poles and zeros later on. Now, let's do the question number 2. In which we are asked to find out the current gain I2S over I1S for the given network. There is a resistor and an inductor. The inductor is having impedance SL in transform domain. So, in this circuit we find that the output current through SL can be directly given by the current division formula as I2S over I1S, overall current supplied, is equal to R over R plus SL combination. R plus SL. Now you take out L common, bring it in the numerator, it will give you R over L divided by S plus R by L. Here we do not have any zero, but you have a pole at S is equal to minus R by represents a pole. Now let's quickly do another example. You know, this has appeared in 2015 in which you are asked to find out G21S. G21S means V2S over V1S for the given circuit. There are three inductors and there are two capacitors here. And we can very well see that in the inductor of one Henry here, there is no current which will flow when we are trying to find out the ratio of the voltages. So whatever voltage V2 is existing here, the same voltage exists between these two points as well. So now our task gets reduced. This voltage is known, right? We have converted all the inductances into the impedance in the transform domain, all the capacitances into the transform domain. And thereafter, this voltage is already known V2S. Let us assume a voltage here V dash S. Now, G21S can be written as V2 by V1, which is equal to V2 by V dash into V dash over V1. In this way, you will be in a position to solve the question very quickly. Now, V2S by v, v dash S, as can be seen here. I'll show you. This is your voltage V2S. And this is your voltage V dash S. When you are considering the voltage here, you will not consider the impedance 2 over S because this is the voltage which is existing here. Now a voltage division will be applied across it. So V2 S over V dash S is equal to this impedance divided by this plus this, which, which will give you 2 over S divided by 2 over S plus S. So after solving, name it as 1. Now, let's come on to the second one. Now, in order to find out the ratio of V dash S over V1 S, we will have to represent the impedance as seen from here between these two terminals looking into this network. Now, since this is an open circuit, so S will not be counted and this S and 2, 2 over S, they are in series. So that will give you S square plus 2 over S. This is the impedance of the combined branch this one. 
this whole branch is in parallel to 2 over s as can be seen here in this diagram. And unless and until you take the parallel combination of both of them, we will not be in a position to apply the voltage division formula. So the next step that we do is we find out the parallel combination of 2 over s and s square plus 2 over s. You know z1 and z2 when in parallel gives you z1 into z2 divided by z1 plus z2 which on solving gives you 2 s square plus 2 over s square and here just add them s square plus 4 over s. One of the s gets cancelled and you have 2 into s square plus 2 over s into s square plus 4. Now once you know this value of impedance, it's a simple voltage division formula where V dash S over V1 S can be directly written as this impedance in the numerator divided by sum of this plus this which gives you this value which on solving gives you twice of S square plus 2 the numerator remains as it is because the denominator entirely it gets cancelled and here you can see after uh, solving it that S square into S square plus 4 comes in the uh, denominator along with this term added to it 2S square plus 2 which after um, simplification gives you S4 plus 4S square plus 2S square plus 4 that is S4 plus 6S square plus 8 and here you have 2 into S square plus 2. Now move on to this formula. G21S is this ratio into this ratio. This one is obtained from one this v2 s by v, v dash s from one and v dash s over v1 is from two just multiply them and you'll get the answer two over s square plus two into two s square plus two over s4 plus six s square plus four s square plus two gets cancelled so you have four over s4 plus six s square plus four now one thing you should see in this diagram that though you are having five energy storage element one two three four and five but since no current is flowing through this one Henry, so the maximum order of the denominator which is present to represent V2S by V1S is 4. You can see here it is S4 plus 6S square plus 4. So this is a very very important thing which will come into the next unit of network synthesis.